Welcome back to the Bubba Burger 250 presented on speed by Nationwide Insurance here at Richmond International Raceway. Beautiful aerial coverage brought to you by DirecTV. To get the most sports in HD, call 1-800-DIRECT-TV. Bubba Burger 250, that's fun to say, isn't it? <laughs> it is fun to say. How about Bubba with that command? Oh, earlier? I loved it. Let's oh, get it on. Baby, let's get it on. That was great. <laughs> and they are getting it on right now. Denny Hamlin is putting it to him. He has an eight-second lead over Kenny Wallace. We have gone 114 green flag laps here at Richmond International Raceway. The last time we went over 100 laps, from the start of the race all green was back in 2009 at Dover when they went 109 laps so we've passed that mark already and quite honestly the way the field is somewhat strung out everybody's minding their manners pretty well right now I don't see any situations maybe well whoops I take that back <laughs> I'm sorry going in turn one might be a situation Ray Dunlap you know guys when we were doing practice earlier today Paul Menard was not very happy with the handling on this number 33 did not like the way it was rolling through the center but he said this car has really good drive off they made a very minor adjustment on this last pit stop and he said he's pretty happy with the way it's going good battle on the racetrack now as Stenhouse goes underneath him there but Menard not uh, complaining at all he said he likes the way it's coming off the corner those two continue to fight for that fourth spot Stenhouse Jr. has it Paul Menard wants it Stenhouse had a good run here last fall he finished fourth in this race Gets around this joint pretty good. He's looking real racy right now. Denny Hamlin continuing to pick his way through the slower lap traffic. That hasn't eaten away at the lead that he has over Eric Almirola because he's still got eight seconds over Almirola, who now is fighting with Kenny Wallace. Yeah, he just got around Kenny Wallace, took the second spot away. But look up ahead there. That car that's going across the start finish line now, that's Carl Edwards. He drove around second place Kenny Wallace, and he drove around Almirola, but he's a lap down, and he's not in a lucky dog position. But just like we talked, Daryl, his communication with his team enabled them to make the adjustments he needed. That car is bad fast now, but, man, he dug himself a hole. Can he dig out of it? But that's what he knew. He didn't panic because he knew when they get in the pits, make some adjustments, fix him up, he can drive back up there and maybe get those laps back. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. worked his way around Ryan Truex. There's Chris Busher in the 16 going by that 30 of James Busher, Cousins. And, and, and that's what I like. Guys that are smart. Carl didn't drive the car, wreck the car, have problems he just waited till the pit crew could help him and now he's fixed up and he might be able to get back in this thing talking about keeping your cool I mean no one's been any cooler than Carl was on the radio talking to Mike Beam about what's wrong with the thing Mike obviously heard Carl loud and clear they made the adjustments and he'll be but he could get back into this thing Stenhouse Jr. also trying to get around James Busher in that 30 against Stenhouse Jr. running in the fourth spot Paul Menard has dropped to the fifth position and you see the distance between him now there's the 33 of Paul Menard going by Ryan Truex who is a lap down currently in the field from eighth all the way back to 22nd those cars are one lap down then behind them we've got four drivers that are two laps down Cook Bliss James Busher and Robert Richardson so yeah listen to this we took off they threw the green we were on 122 laps and basically three quarters of the field are within a mile and a half of each other. Yeah. They've been able to make that much ground together. That's how competitive it is and that's how closely matched all these cars are. Oh trouble turn and around guys. goes Kelly Byers in the 18 trouble and they're all piling in here guys. Our first caution comes out on lap 124. And this way to us clear we'll roll down here and look at it guys be ready left rear. Kelly Byers was running in the 15th spot. And you see a lot of damage to the left rear of that race car. And Brad Keselowski had just gotten lapped, so I think that'll get Brad, the Aaron's lucky dog. Yep. So that's a big break for him because he had short pitted. You know, he had that flat. He was on older tires. Now he can get his lap back. There's only eight of them on the lead lap. Brad will be right back in good shape. Good break for Carl, because now Carl, he's got a fast enough car that he can drive himself back on the lead lap. Let's see what happens to Kelly Byers. He's down underneath Jason Leffler into turn Ooh, three. Look at those brake rotors glowing red hot, and he's on the brakes hard, and around she goes. And Jason. Jason didn't give him a lot of room. Kept him pinned down to the bottom and uh, really just signed it. 
no, no, no harm. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. He just didn't give him a lot of room. Well, now also, when you get down into that third turn, Daryl, that, that rear end wants to come around in a hurry. And so maybe, maybe Fires chased it up the hill a little bit. Uh, Jason wasn't quite giving him the room he thought. All of a sudden, he's crashed. Saw an 18 and an 88 car. Looked very similar to that here a couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> and boy, did the crowd roar <laughs> when the 18 punted the 88. Krista. Elliot Sadler not liking the air pressure adjustment they made on that last run. His car is still good. He said, I just need to be a little bit safer on entry. Let's go back on that air pressure that we did last time. It was a four tire change last time. It will be four tires again. Hermie. Yeah, Krista, Denny Hamlin loves the changes his crew chief made onto that green flag pit stop. It was tires only this time. No changes for Denny Hamlin, right? Eric Almarola in the middle of your screen said when he leaves his brake fans on, it gets a little too tight for him. He'd like to make some different air pressure adjustments. Pop Uri said he will definitely do that. We see the number 33 rolling out of his pits there. And on the last round of pit stops for Carl Edwards, wanted to tell you guys they made a big wedge adjustment. And Michael, just as you said, he made an adjustment on his brake bias, and that's helped this car come back to life. Yeah, it's alive for sure, Ray. That thing's flying. Seeing the race off pit road and the changes. Folks here in Richmond International Raceway getting a good show. A lot of green flag laps being run here. Kelly Byers, though a little hard, racing for position with Leffler, goes around in turn four. Speed Inside Deals is your one-stop shop for exclusive ticket offers for speed viewers. Heading to Richmond International Raceway? Well, purchase a grandstand ticket and a pre-race pit pass for under $100. Visit speed.com slash deals to purchase your speed inside deal tonight. Welcome back, NASCAR Nationwide Series 250 here on Speed, your motorsports authority. These guys needed a reset. Yeah, and they got it. They got but it. But it took we, them to the halfway point of the race to get that reset. But we got us a whole new deal now, because just like Carl Edwards, a lot of these other guys made big adjustments, big swings. Well, Watch out. And a lot of guys are taking the option of the wave around. So oh, yeah. we had seven cars on the lead lap. The Aaron's Lucky Dog goes to the 22 of Brad Kozlowski. That put eight back on the lead lap. And now a lot of wave around cars taking that opportunity to get back on yeah, the lead lap. Yeah, Steve Wallace, Josh Wise, Mike Bliss, a bunch of guys, Brian Truex, all of them taking the wave around. But I like what Carl Edwards did. He went ahead and pitted. He knows he's got a fast enough car to win the Aaron's Lucky Dog back. Yeah, he's not worried. I'm telling you, he's not worried. Great. No adjustments for the 09 and Kenny Wallace. They're very happy with his car. The six car is of uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. They went down a half a pound air pressure on the right side. Hermie? Yeah, right. Justin Algar came to pit road, still fighting a tight condition in the middle of the corner. They pulled a spring rubber out of the left rear. Krista? Brian Scott says his car is a lot better. You got it where I need it on entry, Rick. Pace cars off the racetrack. The field back in the hands of the 20 of Denny Hamlin coming out of four. Green flag back in the air. We're underway. All right, now this is when it gets a little dicey. Everybody's on new tires, trying to catch up, make up, whatever. You got to be careful here. Paul and Art to the outside, trying to take that third spot away. And there's two races now. Carl Edwards is racing for that Aaron's lucky dog, and Eric Amarola is racing to pass Denny Hamlin. And look, off turn four. Coming off four, battle for the lead still. Denny Hamlin, the 88 of Eric Almarola, looks to the inside, going to turn number one. Almarola has taken the spot away from Denny Hamlin. Boy, and here comes Ricky Stenhouse up under Kenny Wallace down the back straightaway. Got racing going on big time now. You mentioned it. We needed a reset. We got one. Here comes Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Looking to get by that 9 of Kenny Wallace. He takes that position. Moves up to third. Kenny Wallace back to fourth. Fifth is the 33 of Paul Menard. On the lead lap, Scott Wimmer running 14th. 14 cars on the lead lap now. Sparks Carl, flying already. Carl Edwards is riding along in the 15th spot. He's got that Aaron's lucky dog locked up at the minute, and he's fast, so he'll get that. He'll have a chance to win this race yet. Almarola Hamlin. Remember that? Almarola Hamlin. You guys remember back to 2007 in Milwaukee? Almarola started the race, Hamlin finished it, got the win, but remember, Almarola was credited with that win since he started the race, but Almarola has never said he felt like he won that race. He, he led the first 43 laps, and they tapped him on the shoulder and said, we got one coming in for you, brother. Hop out. And Denny Hamlin went on to win the race. Those two will ever, forever be tied together because of that day in Wisconsin. 
Carl Edwards, I, I tell you, Carl Edwards will be a factor in this race. Right now, he's in a battle for the lucky dog. And as soon as he gets in that position, I mean, I think he's fast enough to go up there and actually get back on the lead lap on his own. He's not in the battle for a lucky dog, Darrell. He's, he, he's driving <laughs> off from everybody that's related to a dog. Sam Hornish Jr. is running in the 16th spot. He's the next car that is one lap down behind Carl Edwards, but already those two separated by at least one car. Now two cars in between the two of them. So you're saying that dog will hunt. Is that what you're saying? Dog's gone. Dog gone. Dog gone. Al Marola, Hamlin, Stenhouse Jr., Paul Menard, and Justin Allgaier are your top five. Kenny Wallace, Elliott Sadler, Brad Keselowski, Steve Wallace, and Josh Wise, your top ten. Battle for the lead continues. Here comes Denny Hamlin. He looks to the inside of Eric Almarola. They battle going out of turn number four and across the front stretch. It's Hamlin with the lead, but look who he's bringing with him, Darrell. There's your boy. Ricky he's Stenhouse down there. Jr. is on it. Yikes. Trying Yikes. to take second away. Close Ooh. call. Close that was call tight. goes to one. Man, you dive under somebody down there like that, driving down on the bottom like that. He did a great job of hanging on to that thing. That's your speed spotlight. You said he could win this race. My man's on it tonight. He wants this way. He wants that trophy. Battle for second continues. Door to door. Almirola on the outside. Stenhouse Jr. on the inside. And Stenhouse just packed it down in there and cleared him going into one. That's what a Come dive on. bomb that was. Yeah, yeah baby. Let's go get the leader. Let's go get the leader. I wonder how that sounds to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. After the start he had to his career, now he's talking about going and getting the leader who happens to be Mr. Richmond, Denny Hamlin. It's got to sound well, Menard good. Menard took the spot away from Eric Almirola, so Menard now up to the third position. He'll try to chase down Ricky Stenhouse Jr., but everyone's still chasing Denny Hamlin here in his home state. Watch what happened on that last restart. I was watching some guys kind of, because you always look for action on these restarts. The 70 car right here, David Strimmy. Watch him. He says, uh, excuse me, let me get you out of my way, please. Uh, you're holding me up. Oh, well, okay, so that didn't work. Well, let me try this. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let me, but now, now get out of my way. You, you didn't hear me the first time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Jeremy Clements gets shoved out of the way, so David Strimmy moves up, tries to take that position. Strimmy running in the 13th spot. He is on the lead lap. Michael Annette, 14th, also on the lead lap. 88 of Eric Almirola has dropped back to the fourth spot, Ray. Yeah, and guys, whenever we came in for that pit stop, I tried to explain his problem. If he leaves his brake fans on, he builds up too much pressure in the front, and he said then it gets really tight. But if he shuts them off, then he gets a real bad vibration. So he's kind of got to catch 22 here. He's flipping them on and off to try to change that air pressure. But he said it's not working out the way he wants to, and it's making him really, really tight. So a tight condition for Eric Almirola that he's fighting. Again, two cars in front of him is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And you know that's just that's just Almirola using every tool he's got, flipping his switches, trying fans, doing anything he can to get that car to get around these corners like he hopes it will. You know we talked about that restart and how David Strimmy was moving guys out of his way. Well, the six team used a little different motivation to get him to move toward the front. Here's some of the communication before that restart with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. What I, need, what I need you to do is just don't get mad and just try and be as detailed as you can because what it sounded like to me is you were just getting mad and you were saying free in, tight in the middle, free off. That, that uh, wasn't helping me. I just need you to help me out here. Ten for We still got a shot at this thing. You're fine. It's a pretty good impression right there. <laughs> that's, that's Mike Kalanoff, I that's think, spot, is spotting yeah. for him. And uh, that's his crew chief talking to him. And back to what we said in the opening. You've got to be precise, communicate, talk to the crew chief so he can help you. Let him help you. And, the, and what I would do if I'm that organization, I'd say, uh, Ricky, listen to Carl explain to Mike Beam about his car. Did you hear how calm and detailed Carl was when he explained what was going on? He kept it cool, just like we said at the beginning. you got to keep it cool. in front of the field. Denny Hamlin started this race 11th, just outside the top 10, but he's got a 6 tenth second lead over Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Those two running very consistent lap times. Here's Reed Sorensen on the inside and Brian Scott on the outside. Those two battling on the racetrack. There's the gap now between one and two. Denny Hamlin in front of the six of Stenhouse Jr.
Toyota, Ford, Chevy, 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 your top five.